Oh, good morning. It's a beautiful morning uh, on this December 12th of 2019. Uh, it was down to 12 degrees this morning. Uh, it's right about 11.30 a.m. Uh, sun's not appearing until eh, 10.30, quarter to 11 these days. But it is beautiful today. Uh, supposed to be increasing clouds and warming. Um, later tonight, tomorrow, um, you see solar panels are getting some sun. So that's always a good thing. But this, uh, this bizarre 2019 Alaska weather just seems to continue. Uh, a few days ago in Anchorage, they had uh, 50, recorded 51 degrees. Uh, which is, the, I think they said, the warmest temperature uh, that they have ever recorded in over 60 years of uh, record keeping in the winter, um, and especially December. Uh, our weather, a little bit different. We're about 40 miles west of northwest of Anchorage, and um, uh, we tend to be a little warmer in the summer, a little colder in the winter, but, uh, you know, we're not... Um, we're not exempt from uh, from the strange weather. Um, let's look behind me here. You see, there's the peony fields right there. They're all uh, covered. They're well insulated right now. Uh, last week during Thanksgiving, when Anchorage was getting and the and the area was getting rain, we got 46 inches of snow, and then we've picked up another six, eight inches of snow since then. So our fields are well well insulated. And for those of you you peony enthusiasts. Uh, um, in Alaska, we depend on the snow uh, to insulate uh, our roots from the extreme cold. And, and that's critical. We've learned that over the last 10 years or so that um, typically what happens is, is, you know, September tends to be wet. Uh, that hasn't changed as far as our weather um, patterns uh, of late uh, have shown. But um, September will be wet. Uh, the roots will become saturated. Uh, if there's no snow to insulate or other some some other form of of, of insulation, um, then the roots freeze and because they're saturated with water, they burst and then they die. And so uh, we learned that the hard way. There's been thousands of roots lost uh, here in Alaska over the last few years because of inadequate, in most cases, commercially snow cover. And uh, fortunately, that's one of the things that we have um, because of our um, proximity to Mount Susitna, we get a lot of mountain effect snow. And so that's part of the reasoning behind um, uh, the snow that we have right now. Uh, this was uh, this snowfall that we have. You see Mount Susitna in the background there. There's the trees, uh, the sun coming up just over the, just over the mountain now. Um, but that was the reason that we, um, that we got this snow was was uh, it was rain moving up Cook Inlet, and uh, it rained in most areas, but it uh, hit the mountain. Uh, that that uh, moisture rose high enough that it uh, cooled, and it came down on this side of the mountain the snow. So, in one regard, it was a nightmare having that much snow at one time. And of course, we we've already documented the losses that we had. Uh, our heavy equipment shed collapsed and and uh, has buried our bulldozer and our tractor and several other things which we still haven't been able to uncover yet. So we don't know the extent of the damage there. Um, but on the other hand, our, uh, our uh, 12,000 plus roots here are uh, well covered and they're tucked away for the, hopefully for the winter now and, um, and doing quite well. So we're not too concerned about that. Where some of our counterparts back towards uh, Anchorage and uh, Palmer Wasill area, I would suspect maybe in some of the Kenai, I would suspect that they're uh, becoming a little concerned about the uh, the welfare of their roots and their fields, uh, given that many of them have virtually no snow at all, maybe a little bit of ice, and that doesn't help. So, you know, it's um, seems like we're always trying to make lemonade out of lemons. Um, and that brings me to the point of of, uh, you know, I keep thinking more and more about our our industry here in Alaska, the peony industry I'm talking about, 
and uh, the development, the changes, the things that we learn. And, uh, you know, one of the things that really spurred this on was um, that we could grow peonies at a time of year when nobody else is, is growing them uh, or, or picking them. And um, uh, it makes me wonder, oh, I got a tree down. Huh. Uh, dead spruce tree, spruce bark beetles. Um, a whole nother subject though. Uh, but you know, how, um, how we've built this industry on the fact that we can um, harvest peonies in July, August, maybe even in September, uh, when nowhere else in the world that is happening. You know, that is our market. And I have to start wondering, though, you know, we've been, uh, we've been in the peony business uh, just 10 short years now, but the changes that we're seeing and the impact that those changes are having makes me wonder sometimes about the viability uh, of our industry. Um, and... As an example, I guess what I'm really saying is, is they tell us right now that Alaska, Alaska weather climate is changing at twice the rate uh, of the rest of the U.S. Um, and over the last few years, uh, be it a long term or short term trend, you know, we have seen significant changes. Uh, you know, give an example right now, the warmest. This is the warmest year that we'll have ever recorded uh, in Alaska here on the farm. We had zero rain from the time that the peonies broke ground and until uh, after we harvested the uh, stems. Um, if it wasn't for our drip irrigation system, we wouldn't have had a harvest at all. Um, and now, you know, we, uh, we went so long without, uh, without snow cover. Fortunately, it didn't get real cold, so the ground didn't freeze hard. So I don't think that we've had much of an issue there. For us, the snow is here. But here we are, uh, approaching mid-December, and uh, we're still not mobile. You know, I'm 40 miles from the nearest road, and all of the, the bulky, the heavy, uh, the large equipment uh, and supplies that we need have to come in overland in the wintertime because we can't get them on an airplane. Whether it's because of the weight that's involved, uh, cost is always involved. Um, you know, just to give you an idea, you know, just a basic, just a basic plane load of anything uh, starts at about $550 a load and goes up from there. Um, so, you know, whether it's groceries or it's lime or it's construction materials or, or whatever, you know, um, you know, that all costs. But at the same time, uh, uh, surprisingly, uh, even to me, uh, is that we can't um, that we can't get a lot of things through the doorway on, on these airplanes that can get in here. They're too small. So we depend on the winter uh, to bring those in. Here we are in mid-December, though, and um, we're not even mobile. Uh, creeks are still open. Lakes aren't frozen, you know, and, and I've got a 47-mile uh, trail run um, to get to the road to get the things I need and then back again. And right now we can't even do that. Now I'm not overly concerned yet, but this is getting, starting to get quite late. And, um, you know, these are a few of the things that uh, kind of keep me up at night. Um, you know, am I gonna be able to get everything in in the time that I need it? What's gonna be my window of opportunity? Uh, and and will I be prepared, you know, when, when it hits to get everything moved? Um, and not squander that opportunity um, because my alternative is either not do it or, you know, those $550 load plane trips. Um, you know, and I'm standing here on the runway right now. Um, groomed it out yesterday. It's in good shape uh, right now. And um, so we could accept airplanes in here. So we're not completely isolated at this point, but I can't do the things that I need to do. So, you know, having said all of that, I guess... I'm feeling compelled uh, to, to start talking about some of these issues uh, and what climate may or may not be doing to us um, and how I'm going to deal with it, how Paula and I will, will adjust and if we can adjust and, uh, you know, what are, the, what are the parameters, what are the ramifications 
um, of dealing with this. You know, it's hard enough just trying to, to get things to grow and dealing with, uh, you know, all that's just involved in basic farming. And then you start throwing in these unknowns and the changes. You know, it could be that, that Alaska over the next couple of years warms up to the point where we don't have that advantage anymore of, of that July, August, uh, early September harvest that nobody else can reach. Um, because we're warming faster than the rest of the U.S. Could be that Oregon or Minnesota, Wisconsin, you know, um, may take that advantage away from us. More likely Vermont, they're, they're already impacting us from time to time. So those kind of things of, you know, you, you, you deal with trying to, the basics of a farm, and now you have these, these unknowns, um, that it's a moving target. And so, uh, like I say, I feel uh, compelled, and I think uh, that, that over time uh, I'm going to start uh, addressing some of this and and uh, so that you can see, you know, what we deal with and um, not only uh, as a peony farmer, but, uh, you know, yeah, as a farmer. And, and, and I don't want to sound, oh, woe is me. You know, I mean, we, we live a good life. We live a life that we want to live, and, and um, this is where we want to be and what we want to be doing. Um, but, uh, it's like uh, playing a game where the rules constantly change. And I guess that's really no different from any other farmer. You know, all farmers are having, uh, issues with, uh, with the climate and with these kind of changes, whether they're short or long term and what adjustments they make. Uh, you know, do you make a, an adjustment that has long-term impact? Uh, and maybe it's a short-term event, uh, you know, don't, don't know. So, um, at any rate, um, at least for today, uh, I have snow on the ground, uh, I have the sun shining, and um, it's actually a very nice day. So we will uh, head back and start, um, we're going to head back and start shoveling <laughs> more. Uh, we're still trying to dig out from that, uh, that snowfall last week. Uh, and... Uh, kind of get back to normal and then wait and see uh, how conditions develop and and whether or not we can uh, get mobile and start hauling in lime and fertilizer and uh, uh, the agricultural totes that we need to put our flowers in to ship them out in the summertime. You know, they're all sitting in anchorage right now waiting to come back out. Uh, they go in the summer, they come back in the winter. And um, so there's all these things that, uh, that we have to consider. So at any rate... Um, you know, today's a beautiful day. Uh, solar panels are making energy. And uh, and I get to be outside. So, uh, thanks for listening to The Rant.